Brad Wagstaff, 1261 South, 900 West in Midway. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to the school board, the school superintendent for what you're doing on this bond. Um, I, I think that we need it. Um, I've been a long time resident here. I've had all five of my kids go through this school district and you guys do a fantastic job. So um, I want to say thanks for doing this and I also want to say that I am grateful that we're doing this now. As a developer who uh, sees every time I go price a new project, prices are going up significantly. And the need is there, and if this bond doesn't pass now, we're gonna be having to do this again in a year, and the price is gonna go up another six, seven, eight percent. We've seen 10 percent price increases. Uh, the need isn't going away, and we've gotta solve this solution as a community. Um, I gotta say, when I first heard about this bond, I, my initial reaction was I wish someone else could pay for it. And as we, as I dug in and looked at this, this is really our citizens' responsibility to step up and get this built. So uh, I just wanna say thank you for doing this and doing this now and uh, putting this in place and getting this moving forward. Thank you. Uh, Justin Kelly, 143 South, 100 West in Midway. Um, I want to say thanks as well to the board for proposing this bond. Um, we just did it a couple years ago with Rocky Mountain Middle School. Um, I was the principal there and currently still am. But it's been interesting to see how much more involvement I have as a principal with a smaller size school. When I had 1,200 students, I had to beg and plead with parents to be on my community council and my PTA. As of right now, I have 18 members on my community council, which is about triple what I had before. And on my PTA, yesterday they had a meeting for Red Ribbon Week. I had seven moms just for Red Ribbon Week. That's not counting the PTA. So, to go with smaller schools gives kids more opportunities in their endeavors, but it also gives parents the idea that this is our school. This is part of our community. And, you know, the first time I hear it, I graduated from Wasatch High. I don't think anybody really wants to see a split, but at the same sense, when I had 1,200 students, I didn't know every student, and that bugged me. Because I didn't know their story, I didn't know their background, I didn't know how to talk to their parents because I didn't know who they were. Now, I can go down the hallway, I may not know them by first name, but I know that they're there, I can tell you their story, and I know who their parents are. And to me, that's the most important thing that what we're trying to do, I believe, as a board, is build schools that are community, can be fill a part of. And I've seen the split. It's a healthy competition between Rocky Mountain Middle School and TMS. I think the high school, I know the high school, the new high school in Wasatch, Wasatch would want to beat the new high school and the new high school would want to beat Wasatch. But in the same sense, we're collaborating to make sure that more kids are involved. So I'm going to say thank you and it's been fun to see the split working between Rocky Mountain Middle School and TMS. My two minutes are up. Tom Stone, 648 South Street Lane, Midway, Utah. I moved here <clears throat> 34 years ago. I spent my freshman and sophomore year at Alta High School. That was the biggest school in the state at the time. Personally, uh, you can, I'm just, just my personal story, didn't do very well there. My grades weren't that great. Tried to be cool too many times. It wasn't working for me. 
I moved here the summer between my sophomore and junior year. And I literally showed up, the, the moving truck pulled in, and I went over to two-a-days football with Coach Street. He knew my name. He introduced me to the, the people there. And afterwards, they asked me if I wanted to go to a movie. I literally had friends just like that. That particular school had around 700 students. <coughs> and yes, different times, but the dramatic difference of myself and my siblings that followed, uh, all of us which have stayed, all of which which married here, and so forth, the love of this place uh, honestly came because of my and our personal situation in a much smaller high school. To have a claim that we will be the largest high school in the next possibly four years, I believe is nothing to brag about. I believe that is not something we should aspire to, and I think it's something that we should work towards having every student, every student having the opportunity that I got. I believe so much in this that Citizens Building Education as a group, some of us here at the leadership team, are making sure the word gets out. Our number one job is to get facts so people feel good about what they're voting for. We do hope the influence of the vote is yes. And it is citizens building education one student at a time. The last thing I want to do is talk about numbers. I want to talk about students. I want to talk about individual opportunities. And the smaller high schools are the way to go. The new Midway Elementary and that process, I've also spent quite a bit of time studying that. I love the idea of having a, just as good a school there as in Daniels Canyon and Oldville and so forth. It's appropriate. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Melissa Brown. I live at 2330 South, 400 East, and I teach at Wasatch High School. I teach at the alternative part of Wasatch High School, and I am surprised by how many students I have who can't handle the large campus and the large amount of kids in the hallway. And so they have to come over to a smaller school just because of that. And I think it's important to realize that as we have more students who have anxiety, a lot of my students are very good <coughs> students. They're very nice. They're very polite. But they can't handle the crowded hallways that we have at Wasatch High School. And I'm surprised by how crowded it really is there. Whenever I walk through there during, I'm not over at the main campus, but when I walk through there, it is crowded every single moment that I'm in there. And I'm uncomfortable, it's that uncomfortable. And so I want you guys, thank you for, for building this new campus because our kids need it. It'll make it better for all of our students. Tracy Taylor, 451 North, 1300 East in Heber. Um, I'm going to talk numbers. I thought that's why we are here tonight, uh, is to talk about the um, fiscal impacts of this bond. Uh, we filed a grammar request 10 days ago, and we were denied on the appraisal for the land for the new high school and also the survey that we spent, I think, $33,000 on as a taxpayer. We spent that money on a survey. Uh, we asked for the results of the survey, how many people took the survey, um, and also the focus groups. How many people showed up to the focus groups? What was the results of both those things? You denied us that information, which we consider to be public information, for the taxpayers to make good decisions on whether they can afford this bond. That is directly related to what we're trying to do as taxpayers and determine if we can personally afford it. Um, your reason for denying the appraisal on the land is you said it's private information because you're negotiating and uh, you've already negotiated the price. It's up on your website. It's public information. You supposedly are paying 6.2 million on 50 acres. 
that is 124,000 an acre, which is double, if not triple, the recent sales in the North Fields. Um, that is a concern to us, and we want to see the appraisal. Um, you brought up the fact that it's private, and you brought up state code, which is required in the state code that you give us reasons why you're denying it. But those reasons are actually, it says it can be private unless you have already disclosed the location of the property, which there's a map right there showing the location. You told us how much the, the land was, you were paying for it. There's nothing private about this land right now, and you're citing that as a reason to deny that the public should see this appraisal. And the same thing with the survey. You said, oh, there were drafts and there's proprietary information that the public can't have. We paid for that survey. We, we have every right to see that survey. And we're very disappointed that the school board is kind of playing this waiting game because you guys know for us to appeal this denial so is going to Oh, it's going to take 30 days long past the election is over is when we'll maybe see those documents. Thank you. Briefly, the this is this is handled by uh, Mr. Johansson and here in the district. Um, I have some knowledge and I would I would share it at this time that um, these pieces of ground, there are six pieces of ground represented and they all have varying, um, varying prices put on them depending on where they're located. So this was a, this was a, a very complex deal where we brought together <coughs> six different pieces of ground to create this, um, this school site. Um, the appraisal um, will not be made public, and we're within we're within our, our rights with state law. Anybody that, for the simple reason that they have not been closed on, this is a deal that is in progress. Um, due diligence, <coughs> we have we have the uh, normal process that you go through to buy land, and it's still open and ongoing. And so we have checked carefully with our <coughs> bond attorney and others, and we are we are within within the law um, to hold on to those uh, to that information until the pieces of property are closed on. Um, I think that it's only logical that that anybody that uh, buys property that you don't you don't. Uh, go around sharing facts about the process and the purchase and all the details um, before you execute a closing on that property. I bought several pieces of property in my private life and I, you know, those, those, things are, those things are held confident for a reason and state law allows public entities to do that for a reason. So that, that's the reason for that. Um, the, uh, as far as the survey goes, that is also in, in process. Um, that, will be, that will be finalized and presented to the board um, in a public meeting at some point. And when that happens, then it will be made public for all to see. It. But while it's in process and, and in draft form, again, um, we're, within, we're within the law to not release it until uh, until it's finalized and presented to the school board by the company that's doing it. Thank you. Well, I'd like to add something to that. So, this piece of property is unique in that it's being annexed into Heber City. So, what does that mean? It means that it's not one house per 20 acres, like your Northfield's open space has been been discussed. This this piece of property, when it becomes Heber City, will be zoned for multi-family homes. So there will be apartment buildings there. There will be industry and commercial. So there will be storefronts, there'll be restaurants. I've also seen uh, annexation plan to where it's zoned for a hotel. So 
the bypass will be coming through on South Hill Road. So the, the fact or the comment about uh, this is overpriced compared to Northfield's property, Northfield's right now is one house for 20 acres. This piece of property is not that. It will have all kinds of different types of single houses, multi houses, Multi family, industry, commercial, and if you have a school in the middle of all of that, you'll actually have more open space than you would if the developers came in and put multi family houses or single family housing. So I think that that's a point of clarification. I was just going to say it. the statutes that were quoted in that denial. about protected records, not private. They were protected, um, and that's right. And until, until rights of ownership are transferred, appraisals are protected. Until uh, the report is final from, from the survey, it's protected. It's, it's still in draft form, and that's, that's just a, That's why those were quoted that way, on advice of... And, and I think it's just important based on Tracy's comments, and I'm glad that Tracy feels welcome to come to the board meeting. We're transparent. Anything you want to see, we'll let you see. If you want to talk to us, we'll talk to you. If you want to have a discussion, we'll have a discussion. We have nothing to hide, and we're actually very excited to have this be a conversation that people are willing to engage in. Okay, we'll go back to public comment. Okay, I, excuse me, I appreciate the comment of explaining the cost um, according to um, being annexed in. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet, nor do we know for sure whether that will happen yet, nor has that development been approved yet that you're talking about. So I still have some concern about the cost of that property and what that has done also to the values that are around that area. Because right now it actually is still considered part of the county and is still considered one house per 20 acres. And so when you purchase a home, purchase land, raw land nevertheless, that has no utilities or anything else available to it, that cost is really high. And I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the school spending that much money for this property when there was other properties that were available for less and some that were willing to be given. So that is still a concern of mine. I'm sorry. I don't think you ever stated your name and address. I'm That's sorry. That's right. I'm sorry. Marilyn Crittenden, 52 West, Farm Springs Road, Midway, Utah. Thank you. <coughs> I'm Jim Judd. I live at 670 South Mill Road in Heber. I work for the school district. <clears throat> and one of the things under my um, stewardship here is a very small uh, program where we teach inmates out at the jail. Um, some people, very few people know about this program and the point I want to make with this is we talk a lot about <coughs> can we afford to invest in education and working with those inmates I want to just tell you when we do not fulfill our stewardship to educate our society pays that anyway when we choose no education there's a consequence that ripples out through our society um, we feel that community schools that are smaller and intimate and allow for more connection and more opportunities for student success, build better citizens, and better citizens benefit everybody. There's an actual cost, which I don't know what it is, dollar amount to our taxes when that doesn't happen. And I see that when we work with those people who are sitting out in jail, who slip through cracks of educational systems. I wish I could have a list of the things I say I don't want to pay taxes for this and I don't want to pay taxes. 
or I do want to pay this, but the one thing that I'll always support is paying taxes for educating citizens because it benefits the entire nation. My name is Anissa Wardell and I live at 289 Millbrook Road in Heber. Um, well, I somewhat agree with what, what Jim said. Uh, there is a cost of educating um, our citizens and the cost comes both ways. There's also personal responsibility and that's something that I think we lack more than funding for our kids. Um, so I would put that as a, as a number one. The other thing is, is per capita, we are spending more in this district and for this than anywhere else in the state. If uh, there, the state auditor's office came out with a new thing where you can go and check and you can check LEA spending, and there's a lot of things you can do. Um, <clears throat> part of the Wasatch Taxpayers uh, grammar request is to help the, uh, educate the public about what is happening here. We have a bunch of representatives here who I think mean well, um, but at the, at the expense of the citizens that you represent, you are spending money exorbitantly. I'm not sure if you've gone to the city councils and you've seen it, or to the county, I mean, and seeing how many people who are trying to uh, reduce their taxes because of the, uh, there's so much, there's so many taxes. Not only are we going to <coughs> absorb the ones that have just come into effect and these new ones that you want, but the fire district has them. Almost every entity in this county needs money. And I think we should have great education for our, for our children, but there is no reason to bulldoze Midway Elementary and build a new one. There's no reason why we can't add on to the high school. And I've heard all the different things for years. Um, but there are other ways to do this and spend our money wisely. And I'm one of many that didn't vote last time for the bond. And I absolutely will not do it this time. I'd like you guys to come back with a better plan. And I'd like for your surveys, your little little focus groups that you have to include people who are not primarily wanting to spend all of their money just on schools. Come and, and find some, a, a, better, a better range of people for your focus groups and, and let's find some other solutions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ryan Bishop. I live at 1415 South, 3350 East in Hebert. And uh, I appreciate the comments by some of my fellow educators, Principal Kelly and Melissa Brown and, and Mr. Judd. And I'm fortunate enough to work at Wasatch High School every day. And I, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate what you guys are doing as our board and our district in making sure that we're competitive across the state um, with teacher pay and other things. And along with that, I've had the luxury of being at, at three different school districts in the state of Utah. What happens when population grows is you have to build schools. That's what happens. I've been in Cache Valley, I've been in the southern part of the state, Iron County, Washington County, St. George, and now uh, Wasatch County. And our, our growth is huge, and that's more students. And what these other communities and districts have done, which I applaud our board for doing, is they are building schools when the growth happens. I met with Rod Belknap from Weber County School District today, and he was up in our building, and he said to me exactly that. You guys are building schools up here, right? Because I haven't been to Heber for a couple years, and this place has, has, has just tripled in size. And I want to give some numbers quickly before my time is up. We have 107 faculty members at Wasatch High School. That is plus 11 from last year. We have 56 staff members, custodial uh, aides, parking attendants, 
um, lunch, lunch, you know, uh, lunchroom workers. That's 163 employees that come to work at Wasatch High School every day. We have just shy of 2,400 students. Okay, that's a 150 increase from last year. I was talking to our registrar today. We're getting two a week, three a week right now. I don't have the exact uh, data of what we brought in just in the month that school has started, but we're getting two and three a week. Wasatch County is growing at an incredible rate and we have to build schools. And I appreciate and I'm thankful to you guys for taking this on and being willing to spend money to do this. And I'll tell you what, I'll never, I'll never leave Wasatch County because of our board and district. Thank you very much.